Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Shepherd of the Hills Christian Church on Sunday morning, March 21st. That means it's the fifth Sunday of Lent already. That's hard to believe. We want to thank Don Lanier for being our worship leader this week. Uh, thank Jeff and Michael and our musicians for being part of worship every week. If you haven't already done so, grab your Bible, uh, grab some bread and wine or juice for the Lord's Supper, and let's begin worship. Join me as I read our call to worship. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to keep, and a time to give away. This is the season for repentance and renewal. For turning away from the aimlessness in sin for returning our lives to God as joyful disciples of Christ. Oh. time for our children's moments so uh go get the kids and as i say usually let the kid loosen you for a little while as well yeah you know, the, the word surprise is a great word it really is you hear the word surprise and, and sometimes it means there's going to be a party and it almost always means something good's going to happen uh, jesus was full of surprises when you really get to think about it, he really was you know, right in the beginning of the Gospel of John, he surprises everybody at that wedding by providing refreshments for everybody. 
He surprised Cleopas, healed her da his daughter. He surprised the, the Samaritan woman at the well by asking her for a drink and then telling her how loved she was. He surprised Zacchaeus, telling him to get down out of the tree because I'm going to eat supper with you tonight. Not only did that, he forgave him and changed his life. He surprised the 5,000 on the hillside with a meal, all from five loaves and a couple of fish. You know, fish. Hmm. And they had leftovers. That was a surprise. The cross was a surprise as well. It was a hard surprise. But it tells us something. It tells us something really important. It tells us about God's love and how God's love defeats sin and defeats evil in this world. It's no surprise. God loves you. God loves me. And that's always worth celebrating. Let's pray. Thank you, God, again, for loving us, for giving us the gift of Jesus, and for giving us the surprises that meet us every day that remind us of how wonderful you are. Be with us, protect us, and keep us strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, again, as you know, we would at this point be taking up food for the Bethany Food Pantry. They still need that food, and many of you are still bringing it to the front porch of the church. Thank you so much. Now, continue to do that. And if you can't, now, remember that you can always send a donation to the church and mark it for the Bethany Food Pantry. We'll make sure it gets there. We have so many ministries through our outreach ministries that we need to continue to think about and pray about and support. So if you have any questions or, or you just want to find out more, give the church a call. Take care. Be at peace. We come to our time for prayer uh, during this service of worship, and we share together our joys, our concerns, our needs, and I remind you that, that we celebrate birthdays, birthdays this week for, for Hank Anawati and for Jonah Coleman on March the 14th, that's last Sunday, and for Wade Coleman and Kate Ojeda on March the 16th. We again say happy birthday to all of you. And we also uh, congratulate Jessica and Max, Max Aguilar on the occasion of their anniversary, which they celebrated last Sunday as well. We continue our prayers, too, for Linda Kresnik, who continues her journey with the challenge of cancer. Uh, for Sharon Erickson, who continues to recovery, recover from surgery. And for Ray Combs, who had some tests done this week. Cards would be a wonderful way of staying in touch with them in the days ahead. As we move into prayer today, I, I'm thinking of the scripture today out of Jeremiah, where God speaks through Jeremiah to tell the people that the days are coming when there will be a new covenant, a, a new agreement, as though the miracle of creation continues even in the midst of the interaction between the creator and the created. And I thought of this. You know, the same force that created the expanse of the universe, uh, black holes, red dwarfs, quasars, and neutron stars, created as well the trees, the sparrows, the ocean, you, and me. And all are equally valued and all are equally miraculous. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Oh Lord our God, hear our prayers. Hear our questions, hear our petitions this day. 
We ask you to keep our lives aligned with your word, and we pray for your strength and your guidance to keep us focused. We pray for the opening of our ears and our hearts so that we may be those whose actions reflect your love in this world. For all those who are ill, O oh Lord, we ask you to give them strength. For all those who grieve, O oh Lord, heal their spirits. For all those who are lost, Lord, be their anchor when the world is so confusing. And for all who need, O oh Lord, may we be your hands. Your love, O oh Lord, is the treasure in our hearts. May we open ourselves and share that treasure with the world around us to the glory of Christ our Lord. Hear our prayers and hear us as we offer together the prayer our Lord taught us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today our scripture reading comes from the book of Jeremiah. We're reading out of chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The title of today's sermon is, um, wait for it. That's it, wait for it. You realize that it's been over a year since I've seen many of you. It seems quite frankly unreal to me. Even more so when I realize it's been over a year since I've seen members of my own family. You know, that makes me like every one of you longing for something that resembles normal again. The problem with that is that it's just a short hop, skip and a jump from wishing for a return to normal to a longing for the good old days. And when that happens, 
our desire for something more than we have becomes simply a return to the way things were before. And in our cases, that would mean that we would have to pretend that last year just didn't happen. But it did. I have a friend uh, who is brilliant. He is a brilliant scholar, a doctor, a talented musician, a dedicated family man, and a follower of Jesus the Christ. But I watched him do something one day that was a perfect illustration of what it's like to try to move forward by focusing on the past. He had gotten one of those antique chest of drawers that, that doubled as a vanity. It had a little table in the middle, two drawers on each side, and a big mirror in the middle. And he was trying to move it from one, one room to the next in his house that was being remodeled. And he got by and being an individual like he is, he decided he didn't need any help. So he positioned himself right in front of the mirror with a hand on top of each one, each set of drawers. And he began to push and move the entire assembly toward the double doors uh, that provided an entry and an exit to the room. The doors were almost wide enough what he couldn't see was that very thing that they were almost wide enough. And what was resulted was, uh, luckily we were able to fix it with a, a wee bit of paint and a new pane of glass on the French door. As he was looking into the mirror, the only thing he could see was what was behind him. It didn't prevent him from moving forward but it did prevent him from moving forward in the best way. Well, neither can we move forward pretending that the last year just didn't happen and that it's passing has left us unchanged because we have been changed. That's just not, you know, it's not the case that we've been unchanged. We have been changed. We, we have seen people. We have seen people rise to meet challenges that we couldn't have dreamed of a year ago. People have worked tirelessly to care for the sick. And we know people who have done that. And we know people who have been blessed by them. We also know people who have received uh, the, the benefit of all the care and all the, all the love that others have been giving. And we're thankful for the hand of God working through those, those who give themselves in love. Scientists have shattered the, the constraints of normal expectations and the limitations of time in order to give us vaccines in months rather than in years. Neighbor has reached out to neighbor in, in beautiful and wonderful ways too numerous to elaborate. And now we all know what a Zoom meeting is. That's truth. But it's also true that we have this tendency to idealize the past. We gravitate toward nostalgia. Now, I thought that we invented that, you know, just recently, this nostalgia thing. But oddly enough, I found a reference in a sermon by a gentleman named John Ball, delivered in 1318. That's 1318, uh, 700 years ago, during the Peasants' Revolt, where he called for a return to the way things used to be where a person could offer a good day's work and get a good day pay. What he was referring to was the rural ideal of the previous age, and that was in 1318. You know, the problem that we've been struggling with for the past 700 years apparently is that we haven't learned that it's impossible to embrace today, not to mention embracing tomorrow, if our focus is squarely up on, on yesterday. And into this created world, God speaks through Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. And the days are coming. They aren't here yet. You need to wait. You need to pay attention. Take note of where you are. Learn what you need for today. Then look toward tomorrow. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. A new covenant. 
brand new, unique, unlike anything you have ever seen before. So don't expect it to look like the covenant which was made with your fathers when they were taken by the hand by God himself to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they broke that covenant. Even though God gave them the best that God had and everything that they needed, they broke the covenant. But this is the covenant, the brand new one, which God will make with the house of Israel after those days. This is what he says. I will put my law within them. I will not write it on paper or on tablets or on stone, but I will write it upon their hearts and it will be forever with them, a part of who they are, a part of who you are, and God will be their God and our God and we together shall be God's people. And no longer shall each person have to teach their neighbor and each one their family saying, know the Lord, because you see, we will each one already know the Lord from the least of us to the greatest. And that's what God says. He says that because he will forgive our sins, our iniquity, and he'll remember those no more it's all because he loves us. He loves us so much that he gave us God's very self. All that God was and is and will be. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. It's all there. But we got to be willing to wait for it. You know, wait for it. God doesn't deal in reruns. You know, everything God does is original, unique, a brand new creation. That includes you and me. And it's virtually always an unexpected surprise when, when God does something. And we've got to wait for it. Because it's coming. The next one is always coming. But we can't look so far ahead that we miss today because God's greatest gifts never arrive tomorrow. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. And the day that those things arrive is always called today. So wait for it. Hope for it. Live for it. Allow it to embrace you. For we are sustained and guided by God's own love for us. In Christ Jesus, our Savior. And know this. According to Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Know this. If anyone is in Christ... If anyone has been embraced by that new covenant, then that one is a new creation. The old is now behind them, and they look ahead to the new that has come and is coming, and they are willing, they're willing to wait for it. Amen. And amen.
the time in our service where we come to share our gifts and our offerings. Thank you all so much for continuing to mail in your tithes and blessing our church so that we can bless all of those around us. God calls upon us to love one another as God loves us, even as God has abundantly blessed us with good things. Let us bless others through gifts that show we care. Let us pray. Holy God, we offer these gifts with our eyes open to the needs around us, our hearts open to the plight of others, our feet ready to go out of the way to help others, and our hands ready to reach out and share. And we pray always in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room, and he took bread and he broke the bread, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant. My blood spilled for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink from it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. It's our privilege to serve at God's table this morning and to remind you all are welcome at God's table. Let us Please join me as we pray. We love you, gracious God, because you have first loved us. We ask your blessing on the bread and the cup, and we pray that our whole lives, through the power of the Holy Spirit, may be lived in grateful response to your love. Help us to love you with our whole hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we want to thank you for joining us this morning, for spending the first part of your Sunday morning with us here in worship. Know that we love you. Know that we miss you. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and share the love of the living Christ with all who pass your way. Amen. Amen.